Hello everybody, Ian Robson here for another edition of Iron Horse. Alright, we've got a couple things going on today. As you can see, we have, finally, one cow that is ready to go to the market. Uh, unfortunately, it is only one cow. Um, so, that is not quite enough to take it to the market, so we're going to have to wait and see what happens. Uh, I progressed time, enough for the fields to be ready and harvested, uh, should we choose to. Uh, but I was kind of hoping more pigs would be, or more pigs, more cows would be ready rather than just one. I have the feeling that by the end of, or on next day, I should say, so tomorrow in this game, they'll be ready. But I'm not sure yet, so. Yeah, I'm really not sure. I guess we could try. That means I have to, like, yeah, that's, that's too risky. So we have one cow ready. Uh, he is ready to go, so. We'll have to see how that progresses. Anyways, uh, we got a couple things going on today. I finally started using a little bit of course play on this map, and the only thing I'm using it for is to go between fields so I don't get lost every single time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm using course play for this time around. I was like, I realized I was like, I'm not using course play at all this time. I'm like, maybe I could use it strategically, like how to get from one field to the other field without getting lost. Uh, and that seems to be what I'm doing so far, and it seems to be working well thus far, so I'm pleased with that. Um, I thought it was going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit, not tricky, but I wasn't sure how it was going to work. Uh, so I tried it out, it works perfectly fine. Uh, the reason why I wasn't sure is primarily because of just the roads themselves, and sometimes they're not as even as I'd like them to be, and I was just kind of curious as to whether of course play would run all over the place, but so far it's been okay, so... Which is good. Alright, where is my plowmaster? He is chilling out right here. I don't know what field this is. Uh, this is 21. 21 to HQ. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so that's, <laughs> that's how I named them. Uh, not very exciting, uh, but it does give me an idea of where I'm supposed to be going here. So let's go ahead and drive this course. Um, so yeah, the funny thing is, I, just, I named them like really oddly. And I was just kind of like, well... There's got to be a good way to name this, and uh, this is what I came up with, so. There we go. I was going to say, it's taking all the time. And this way, I can read comments as we're going places, uh, which makes my life a lot easier without crashing into everything. Uh, maybe you guys wanted to see me crash into things? I don't know. We'll see. All right. Let's take a look at a couple of the comments from the previous episode. What do we got here? See, this is what I was talking about, like this type of road right here. This is like the worst one out of all of them. I think other ones, otherwise it's not so bad, but this one's kind of bad. What do we got here? Iron Horse. So, let's take a look at a couple of the comments. What do people have to say? Oh, I guys haven't even seen that episode yet, apparently, so I can't talk about the comments that don't exist on that one. Here we go. Jeez. This is what happens when you start recording in advance. It's like, all right, well, let's check out some of the comments, and it's like, wait a minute. Those comments are from an episode that hasn't gone live yet. Anyways, this is what we have. We have, Jared says, uh, apparently you can add automatic pickup to the blue bale robin, Robbie, I think it's called. Um, which is kind of cool, actually. I, didn't, I haven't tried it yet. Uh, oh, actually, I have read these already. Never mind, then. Like I said, this is what happens when you don't run into, when you run into problems, not problems, but you run into situations where you have already read the comments or gone through the comments and the reason why you've already gone through the comments is because you recorded another episode that was that hasn't aired yet uh, which is you know one of the problems I've run into apparently now I'm actually ahead again which is really nice um, it means I don't have to scramble so often not that I really scramble much but you know I don't have to worry about it if uh, I have something lined up so that's the good thing about it you know it's good to be prepared. So let's say I fall ill for whatever reason, which is possible, right? These things can happen. God forbid is the expression that people use. Um, should something like that happen, then I'll be able to, uh, you know, have, a, I, I, I have an episode recorded already, which is nice because, you know, sometimes stuff happens. All right, where is that plowmaster? He's just chilling out here. Excellent. Someone actually suggested a while back that I sell this little thing. But I actually kind of like this tractor. This is one of the reasons why I don't sell it. Um, because it's just a chill tractor. That's right. I call it tractor chill. Alright. So, let's just leave it up beside the water truck here. 
which we haven't used very much. I realized that after we bought it. It was cheap, so I'm not that worried about it. But I thought maybe we would use it more often, but we really haven't needed to yet. Uh, and that's primarily because the animals are fine. They don't need our assistance at the moment, so. That's the, oof, that was close. Uh, that's the primary reason why we haven't done it. Maybe I should record a course from here. Uh, nah, this is close enough, it's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, so the nice thing about it was, if I have multiple vehicles need to go to the same place, i.e. the supply vehicle, or the plowmaster right here, uh, if he needs to take stuff to the, you know, to a different field, service trailers style, uh, he can easily do that. Anyways, so what are we actually doing today? Wow, that was a long preamble. I'm sorry, guys. Um, we're going to do a little bit of hay today. We are running a little bit low, yeah, running a little bit low on hay, uh, so I figured we might as well go ahead and make a little bit of hay of this episode using the Plowmaster. So if you remember, the Plowmaster is a 75 horsepower tractor. Um, so because it is 75 horsepower, it can handle this right here. And the reason why it can handle this moco right here is because uh, this one doesn't have the auto swather on the back and with the auto swather you actually need 80 horsepower if memory serves where are we here do 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 yes 70 horsepower and our plowmaster as I go past it has 75 so we're good that's pretty cool can you guys see that fan in there that's awesome and I modding does such a cool job all right, so the field we're going to be cutting is this one over here. Uh, this is the one I discovered off screen uh, one day, and someone actually thought it was a different uh, map altogether. Uh, it's, it's not. It's the same map. It just is like in a different place. And let's go check. Yeah, we're going to have to deal with that manure soon because don't want it to pile up too high because then it just becomes a huge, huge problem. Maybe we'll do that, deal with that today, depending on how much of this hay we get cut. All right, so let's go ahead and get her done here. All right, let's just fire it up. Uh, put it into work position here. Didn't like that so much. All right, so now you can actually, when I did it off camera, I actually did it so I just use the GPS mod. That's how I did it. Um, but it, uh, you don't need to do it that way. Can I go second level? Well, I guess I can. Sweet. Uh, you don't really need to use the GPS mod for this because you're kind of going in circles and whatnot. You don't. I, that's why I kind of discovered. I was like, well, you could use it for it, and it does work. However, for this type, this shape of field, like if you look right here where I'm, like where I'm driving on the map, like it's not a nice shape for using the GPS mod or course play or anything because it's you no know, like ovalish, but like I don't know, amoeba-ish. There you go. If you guys know what an amoeba is. If you don't know what an amoeba is, go look it up. Because that is basic science, my friends. Last time I checked, at least. Alright. Yeah, like I said in the, one of the previous episodes, I talked about... Um, some people were, have already got out and done some foraging uh, for their dairy cows and whatnot. So I'm actually pretty surprised by that. Um, in Ontario specifically, I thought they'd be waiting a bit longer. But uh, I guess it's more alfalfa. I guess matures a bit earlier. Uh, than other stuff, so that's my assumption at least. So because it matures a bit faster, that's why it's ready in Ontario. So like they were saying, uh, it's June, I don't know, is it June sixth today or something, um, and it's already June sixth, and we have people already out there. Uh, I guess we'll just follow this one as well. Uh, we already have people out there doing uh, some hay and whatnot, so it's pretty surprising. I don't know. My parents in laws they think they might have, they might be doing a hay around, um, uh, they were saying, I think the, the thought is around July, July 1st-ish, uh, kind of the end of June, maybe July 1st, depending on um, situation and whatnot, so that'll be kind of fun, actually. I don't know, maybe they'll need my help, maybe they won't, I'm not sure at this point. I don't know, I usually get a call randomly, and they're like, hey, uh, do you have some extra time, can you help us out, sort of thing, so that's usually how it rolls. I don't mind. Uh, the way my job works, it's kind of like I teach um, from like a September until June, end of June basically, and then I kind of have July and August off. Um, because it's contract though, you don't get paid for it, so it's not like it's, you know, I like it. I enjoy it still. 
one of those crazy things. Some people would just hate that because they don't know what's going to happen the next year, but I don't know. So far, it's been pretty chill for me. I've enjoyed it, but, you know, everyone's different, right? So, nice. So this field's been, uh, this field's actually a pretty nice size field for doing hay on, I discovered last time. Uh, if you recall, I kind of showed you guys at the end saying, okay, this is what it looks like when it's all done. Uh, but this time around, I figured you might as well, I might as well show you uh, the hay making process, I suppose. So, yeah, that's one way of going about it. I'll probably, I'm going to rake it together anyway, so I'm not that worried about um, not missing bits and pieces, because it'll roll back again too, right? So... But this Keverland, yeah, it's funny. When I first started this map, I realized how much Kever Keverland stuff I ever ha uh, already had. Um, I was kind of surprised actually. I was like, wow, we actually have a lot because we have this guy right here. Uh, our mixer is actually Keverland as well, and our mower here, and our dry fertilizer spreader is also uh, Keverland. So we got like three different pieces. Do we have? I don't think we have anything else, but the fact that we have that many pieces alone is pretty crazy, actually. So. I'm pretty pleased with it. I don't know. The NI modding stuff has always been pretty good. This is funny because this is NI modding here and this is NI modding there. I wonder what they're going to release for the uh, for the new edition of Farming Simulator. I wonder, wonder what they're going to try and do. Because they've done quite a few different things. Like they've done the mixing wagons, they've done you know these tractors. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you go into the NI modding website, they actually have some stuff they're working on uh, that looks pretty good. Same with the Euro DZN guys. They give you like work in progress and they just give you a little teasers and it's like ooh, they actually have some I don't know when it's gonna come out but they actually have some really nice Massey Ferguson's they're working on some of the stranger models of them so I'm kinda of looking forward to uh, the time when they actually get those out uh, because it is gonna they're gonna look pretty cool they're like uh, how do you describe it not quite like this but more like stubbier I guess the word is the word I would use um, so they are gonna they're gonna look pretty cool once they're all said and done um, because, you know, it's Euro DZN guys, they make good stuff. So they're the ones, for those who, people who don't know what they've made, so, so they've made the JCB Fast Track, they also made the Bobcat, uh, they also made the Feeding, maybe that was Euro DZN guys. Ooh, and I think about that. Uh, nope. Oh, that was the Euro DZN, not NA Modding. My apologies. Oof. Any guys from NA Modding? I'm, uh, sorry about that, guys. That's Euro DZN claim. Um, anyways, yeah, so they made these, uh, the, uh, the feeding stuff, oh my goodness, what do you call it, feeding technology, I think that they refer to it underneath here, yeah, uh, so they, no, they didn't do that, yeah, they did, yeah, so they made these, the feed trailers, apparently, uh, they made this, 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 yeah, it's like a feeding pack, if I remember right, but NA Modding hasn't done this, this actually is another one, uh, this is another group, L, uh, Lux Farm LS, they make some really nice stuff as well. Um, they made the Koshe, um header trailer that I use every now and then. Uh, they made that thing. That's really nice as well. And they actually made Belgique Profonde, uh, which is Caravare 76, Hitman A2. Uh, whoa. You didn't see that. Hitman A2 also play on, and Fat Man. So, yeah. They actually made that map, if I remember right. Pretty nice looking map. It's got beef cattle on that one as well, which I really like about that. Although... I remember looking at that map once when I was going to be doing a Let's Play, and I was like, ah, this is a really cool map. Uh, but the problem is, it has some things that I am not used to, and I wasn't looking forward to experiencing, so I decided to not do it in the end, but maybe in the future or something. I know a lot of people really like that map, and a lot of people are saying, play on Belgique Profonde, and uh, maybe someday, but... I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but the RPMs of the tractor, or the 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 work on the engine, I guess, or the not to think. What am I thinking of here? What's the words I'm looking for? Words. The work of the engine increases. No, not what we're looking for. Anyways, let me try to talk about. So, so that thing stopped. And then you can hear the engine increase in uh, the workload on it. So it's like when you engage the PTO, essentially. Uh, that's what I'm thinking of. So right there, when I turned it off, when I tuned this little turn here, that was what I was talking about before. So I'll engage it again, you'll hear it. So that's pretty cool. 
I like that little feature. It's just the little things, obviously. It's just the little things that I really like about some mods. Um, that are, you know, it adds just a little bit. And it really makes a big difference. When you play the game a lot, and I suppose I play it quite a bit, uh, more than some, less than others, I suppose. Um, so because of that, it's just nice little things you get, you like, like having the gauges on the, on this tractor right here is nice. Having uh, the workload on the engine increase and decrease as you engage and disengage the PTO, like little stuff like that. Uh, that's what I like to hear, I like to see on more mods. But of course, in order to do that, it does take a lot of, I suppose, a lot of coding. I don't know. I've never, uh, I've never coded anything. Well, or whatever you need to do in order to make a mod. I've adjusted some mods, but not made my own mod. I had actually, uh, I had a thought um, today at, when I was going to work. I was thinking about, uh, a lot of people keep asking about the the edits I've made on the All-American Fire. And people are asking, can I have a download link? And that made me think, well, I have to get permission from the creators of the maps. And I haven't gotten contact with them yet. Um, but what I was thinking was maybe I could, you know, just make my own map and then it would make a difference and then add some of those things. And I guess I would make it a Canadian map, I suppose, but I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, it is a lot of work to make my own map, but there are some like ones that you can start off with like blank maps and go from there. It is doable. Um, but it's just a thought I had. I'm like, oh, that'd be kind of cool. And then I could, um let you guys download it without a problem then because then it would be a map that I made as opposed to somebody else and I wouldn't be I wouldn't mind it like go ahead go to town on it but um, it wouldn't be this good that's a for sure uh, not Glen Malurga maybe like more like the all-american map just because um, the detail in that like amount of like little things that are added is not as much as like this map for example but that was the f the guy who made the All-American map. That was his first map, so I give him props for that. There's a few little things, like, like I mentioned in a previous episode, like things, just small things, for example, like adjusting triggers and stuff like that. Like, things you forget about, really, if you don't do it, like, if you don't do it often, I suppose. That's my guess, at least. All right. Getting down to the wire here. I did a lot more turns. But it looks pretty good, I think. That's not so bad. Oops. Should probably get back in. Oh, you can raise it and lower it. I totally forgot about that. Uh, but like I said, it is a little thing, so. I guess I should really, instead of turning it off and on, that'd be a little rough in the tractor. What I really should be doing, I suppose, is lifting it and lowering it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's see if I can do that this time. Ah, uh, that's not so bad, I guess. Thought I was gonna screw that up. <laughs> I honestly did. I was like, oh, this isn't gonna go well. But apparently we, it worked out well, so. That's a pretty nice little graphic, I have to admit. Like, I don't normally raise it and lower it myself. Like, tends, it tends to be just down all the time, just because that's the way, uh, if you want to use a course play, you kind of have to just leave it down and deal with that. But, you know, doing it yourself, you can do whatever you like. There we go. Nice. Last little pass here. Let's get that done here. I realize it's going around in circles, but uh, I haven't uh, made much hay, and I need to make some more, so. All right, sweet. Let's take it out of, put it in a transportation position. There we go. That was actually quicker than I thought it was going to be. It may have seemed longer for you guys because I was going around in circles, but it seemed to work fairly well. Not the circle part, but it seemed to work, you know, doing its thing. I told you, like, a hand motion there. I was like, going around in circles is the hand motion I just did. So it's like, you know, doing its thing, you know, working around. Um, <laughs> and the funny thing about that is the fact that you guys can't see that. Um, so, yeah. Anyways. Well, I guess I could have used the IH here. Oh well. Alright. I feel like I should put a shed right here or something, but... I kind of like not having a shed, because then I can just, you know, drive around and do what I'm doing right now. Because I, you know... If I probably had super expensive equipment, I probably wouldn't do this, because that'd just be a bad idea, but... 
the fact that I can do it. Oh, let me check the horsepower requirement on this. I think 75 is okay. Mm, coffee doesn't say. Erg, and I'm modding say what the horsepower requirement is. This should be fine though. Yeah, that's not too bad. All right, let's go ahead and get this. It's funny. Normally, this these type this type of tractor bugs me, um, just because of the amount of sound you get. But right now, I don't uh, doesn't seem to be bothering me. Maybe it's bothering you guys. I don't know. It's kind of the same constant sound you've been hearing for the last little while. So, uh, how wide is this? Two rows or three rows? It's about. Uh, looks like it's two, so if I follow this row, I should be okay. Should be being the keyword, of course. Let's just follow this. I don't know if you guys can hear, there's a totally like an ambulance or a fire truck going around in the background. That's the joys of living close to a main road, I guess. Gotta love it. Actually, it's... I mean, totally used to it, but where, where I grew up, uh, we lived close to a main road, but it was like close to a cemetery as well, so it was generally pretty quiet. Um, however, there were times where you could hear the road from our house, which is, you know, kind of surprising, because our house was like set back in the distance, like it was like, I don't know, maybe not quite a kilometer, but close to a kilometer set back from the road, so... I I, ne I didn't hear it, but my dad always heard the sounds from the road, and he was like, he always got a bad night's sleep because of it. I don't know. Never understood that, but he was always like, the road was so loud last night, or something like that. Made me laugh. Actually, one of the other funny stories in relation to my dad and noise. I used to have an older IBM mechanical keyboard, and <clears throat> this mechanical keyboard sounded mechanical, obviously. Let's raise those. Perfect. Uh, it was a mechanical keyboard, so what would happen is it would make like a, a springy click sound, and I used to play video games late at night uh, when I was younger. Not that I don't do that now still sometimes. Not as much. Not late as night. It tends to be early in the morning now. Anyway, so yeah, I used to have this mechanical keyboard, and I'd play like Diablo or whatever I was playing at that time later at night, and then my dad would like totally come into the room and be like, Ian, go to sleep. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> but because it was because the keyboard made so much noise, right? So, if the keyboard hadn't made any noise, I probably would have been fine. I'm just going to do this. There we go. Uh, go for these spinning blades. There we go, sweet. All you, need, all you need to remember is stay in the middle. Have a row on the right and the left, and you should be fine, for the most part. I'm just staying to the one side just a little bit, just so make sure I get it all. But it seems to be working out fairly well. I guess this is how you would do it in real life, I suppose. Something along these lines, at least. Maybe you would make straight lines and not do what I'm doing, but... I don't know. I haven't done rake... Actually, it's not true. I've done raking before, but I've done raking only with, like, an old-school rake. Uh, like an old uh, New Holland-type rake. Uh, that is not PTO driven at all. It's actually, um, what do you call it? I'm not even sure. Mechanically driven, I suppose, would be the word you might say. Uh, I guess this is a good place to start. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I guess it was mechanically driven, so it was like when the tire turned, it would actually turn the uh, or rake, turn the rake on as well. So actually, there's I have one here. In the game, I have actually used something very similar to it. It's kind of funny to use. When I consider what things I've used in this game in comparison to <laughs> in real life, like I've used one of these, and that's about it. So that's the extent of my raking. I have used like a, um, I don't know, Grant from uh, Grant from Scottish Gaming Guys. He used, he calls it a hay bob. I've used one of those as well. Uh, it's like a tether. Basically, it's like a single row tether. I've used one of those as well, and uh, they're not too bad to use. I had a heck of a time. The hate, uh, the tether I was using is uh, wasn't as good as my sister-in-law's. Um, I don't know. For, it seemed that way at least, but it was just I think it was just the way uh, I'm not used to it, and 
It requires a certain speed to function properly, and I just, uh, well, I guess we'll continue on this little path here. Uh, it requires a certain speed, and I wasn't uh, maintaining that certain speed, so I would not necessarily ruin, but I wouldn't make... The rows wouldn't be very nice after I went through them with a <laughs> tenor. Uh, let's, let's put it that way, so... Sweet, that looks like it's done. Let's put that in a transport position. So yeah, that's the that's how fast lighted thing is. Once it's all said and done. Uh, it's a pretty big rake, actually. It's one of the NA modding Kroon rakes. I actually have another rake I'd like to get eventually, just to test it out. Um, you guys may have seen it, but I'm not going to point it out now. If you saw it, good for you. If you didn't, well, then maybe I'll have to wait till I pick it up. Uh, it's a bit, it's a different style. It's like a uh, an offset rake. Let's drive through the bushes here a little bit. There we go. Perfect. And this tractor cannot handle that baler, so let's hop into the IH here. It's going to be the same thing with this tractor. This is the Euro DZN tractor. This is the difference between the two. That's kind of funny, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, so this is totally a Euro DZN tractor. Yoink. Let's take that support off there. Look up the PTO. Yeah, so that's the difference. That's a Euro DZN tractor, and that one's an NA modding tractor. That's funny. This one, I think it looks like the NA modding one has a bit more detail. Like, in here... Uh, do the pedals move? I can't remember. I think the pedals move in here. Um, but in this one, the pedals do move, I believe, and the levers move as well. Although, look, my one, my one uh, gripe with this one, it's a bit dark on the inside. And the engine's loud, but... So are the NA modding ones. But that's like, it's, uh, well, I guess this isn't an open cab, so I can't blame it on that. Uh, but as you can see, we got our little John Deere screen there, which is good. Uh, where should we start? Let's go clockwise, I guess. We've been doing clockwise the whole time. Might as well continue the path. All right. Can I go speed two? I think I can go speed two. See if I can do this. It's funny because when I play it like this and I have to do it like this, I have to like pay a lot more attention. So it's almost like I almost don't want to talk because I'm like, all right, is it gonna beep now? Is it gonna beep now? And I have the sound turned down a little bit. So did I not lower? No, I did lower. I was gonna say I'm like, did I not lower that guy? Um, lost my train of thought now. Oh, there it is. So I have to pay more attention now. Uh. When I play like this, with the all the HUD turned off. It's good though, I like it. There we go. I suppose I could pay attention to that right there. Let's just back that up. So yeah, I'm going to make a little bit of hay, and we'll wrap these... Actually, we don't need to wrap these bales. What am I talking about? Uh, these are just going to be straight. Uh, pff, actually, you know what I should have done? Eesh. I should have tedded it first. And I actually have a tether I was going to use too. Darn. This guy right here. Hmm. Don't have enough time to do that. Hmm. Yep, that looks like a good bale of hay. Not dry hay, though. That's the problem. Hmm. That is a problem. Because I was going to make dry hay, not wet hay. Because this technically should be wrapped now, pretty much, because it hasn't dried yet. But... At least that's the best of my knowledge. All right, so what I'm going to do, I think, is let's go ahead and buy that tether. So this tether is the Pottinger Hit 8.81. I suppose that means it's 8.81 meters. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and buy that right now because we're going to try and do proper hay this time around, I suppose. And what I'll do is I will tether it off screen and then I'll re-rake it and then I'll, we'll bail it next episode, I guess. How does that sound? Good? Good. All right, that's it for today, folks. Lots of going around in circles, I suppose, but it looks, I don't know, I was relaxing. I was relaxed doing that. There you go. Let's take a quick look at the lighthouse there. All right, folks, that's it for today. My name's Ian Robson. It's been Farming Simulator 2013, coming at you from Iron Horse. Have yourselves a good day.